I'm sorry, many different sequences with, with the, the Fantastic Four 2. And he gave us like, I mean, it was like two pages of boards with four, four panels each of just some kind of ideas of like, okay, we need Silver Surfer, just burning, because he just entered the atmosphere, and I think they were at a wedding. I, I watched the movie like once. Oh, yeah. And it would, I mean, it, the movie was, it was all right. But it's, you know, it, missed a lot of stuff but Silver Surfer enters the atmosphere and Johnny's at a wedding and literally that's all the boards were and then there's a, there's a lot of boards of uh, uh, Silver Surfer like coming up against a building it's the uh, iron the flat iron building in New York and he had it where he, we, we had it reversed where you know the flat iron building is like a big cheese wedge but except like real tall and it, uh, so the surf was going right towards that the the point of it and broke off. And the way we the way we did it that way at first, it just didn't work at all. It's like, well, you know, in Tim's story, he comes in, he looks at it, and he's he's like, yeah, that's fine, but he just kind of lets you go with it. And so, in, in, in a matter of those, it was it two weeks? We put together like a whole sequence, and we built everything from scratch. Uh, the you know, like sky, the sky, the buildings. The buildings is like what they're, they're cubes, but the texture on them. Uh, we actually got Google Maps and printed out like a big old section of New York of where this was actually going to happen. And we kind of made a uh, just a real rough um, sketch, not a rough sketch, a rough 3D sketch of all those buildings. Just super simple. Got the camera in there. Got the camera going at like you know 300 miles an hour. At what it would actually look like. We had to actually slow it down because it looked like they were it was too crazy. They'd like melt the buildings as they go go by or something. Uh, no, that's that's fun. So the shot of him going down the actual building. There's a there's an exact board from Adolfo that has like. A, I cannot remember the exact name of the building, but it has a swoop at the end. It kind of goes like this, and it comes out. And it's right by the library. I've never been to New York, but that board was in there, and he had it kind of come, you know, kind of the silver circle going down, whatever. So we took that. We didn't know timing. We had to come up with the timing. How would he? How he gave it overall it? length or something of the shot, or uh, no? We just we you have to come up with that because they just give you a board or maybe even a couple of boards. So you have to puzzle piece the rest of it. Like how would he actually get there? Like if he just went by the flat iron building and now he needs to go here, you know, well he can't do that first. He's got to, so we changed it. We changed the movement around the flat iron building. Came back around and went down that street. Uh, so you have a lot of input. You can sit there and if the director is cool with you and he, he trusts you, you can kind of just, just kind of make up some cool stuff, and as long as it fits within that story, you kind of go for it. I think at the end he grabs him or something. Is, is some of that written out, or they give you kind of a minor script? Because there's no dialogue, I don't think. Probably. No, it was, it was Johnny was, they were going to, uh, Silver Surf was trying to outrun him. He basically, let Johnny catch up, so he just grabs him. I had like four boards to go off of that. Okay. And the original, the one I did, the one that I had done, was with the Silver Surfer standing, you know, perfectly up like this, and he catches him very alien. And we did our previous exact like that because it was very strong. But when it went to like Canada, uh, I think they did the. I'm not sure we did the actual finished animation. I think it was. I'm not sure on that one. But they had him like in a crouched position, he was holding him like this, and it just it didn't work as well. Like in that that happened in the final movie, so a lot of stuff gets ripped out. Put back together, flipped around, and then, and then the, after that, it's like watching the kids go off to college. You don't have any control over it after that. It's and you know you may have worked on this thing for two months straight and got it to like a pristine point. You're like, all right, it's cool. They may go like, oh, let's just I don't like that shot. That's gonna cost too much. Okay, just keep, cut it out, and they don't. And that's that's how fast it goes. Wow. So. That was about two weeks, you said, for your team right there, that one there. And that was the team, two guys on that one for about two weeks. Okay. But it's a lot longer than that. There's a whole scene where he goes in the tunnel. I don't know if you've seen the tunnel part. It's been a while, you know. But, like, I, uh, my, my friend John Griffith, he did, 
we cut it up into two, where he chases you through, like near the Flatiron Building, near the library, and then after that, uh, Griffith, John Griffith takes over and goes in the tunnel, and there's a whole big scene in there, and then they fly out of there, and I think he, they go through a bus or something. But uh, you guys have some good uh, rendering machines and held on to all that. I guess that's that's, play that's all OpenGL Play Blast. That you do, we just literally capture. We have to have the scenes playback playback fast enough so you can sit there and animate like stuff really really fast. So there's not individual frames. Yeah, you just you hit a play blast and you know it's not rendered like you know 35 millimeter or whatever they do 70 millimeter. It's rendered out like some kind of HD level as far as final. Like you, can, you can you can like. For our work, you got to spit it out very fast, so it doesn't matter. So you, you could do HD and then shrink it back down, but you've got to be able to like spit these shots out, like you know, like one of those shots probably takes a good hour and a half if you got all your pieces ready, all your, your little characters ready to go, your camera set. It takes about an hour to do each one, and then if you want even more like simpler than that, you can go you know, however, however detailed you want it. Uh, that kind of works. That's cool. Yeah. All, right. All right. I think that it's, it's one you know, uh, when you were at Einstorm, uh, when I was at Paramount, when I was a technical director with Jimmy Neutron, and we'd get the stills, we'd get the boards, and we'd have the, the lighting about kind of what the artist or, or the director wanted to look like, and then we had full control over what we wanted the final shot to look like, and uh, we'd go through retakes you know, twice a week, and they'd check those shots, and then the producers and the director would look at them. And say yes or no, or yes, I like this, but take this out or add this, and then we go to the next stage, and it just gets approved. And they're counting on you to use your talent and creativity to come up with something interesting. I think that's what John was talking about. Is that there's no, you know, is it 35 seconds or is it 32 and a half seconds? It's got to be that right time, you know, for that shot. Yeah, it's so. like you, you'll you'll know when it feels right. It's when you play it all out together, you'll know it. When you see it, you'll pick up on it. Once you have that at yeah. Storm. Well, we had a little different at Iron Storm. We, they actually hired a bunch of, um, well, not a bunch, but Top Cow at the time. They were from Image Comics, and they did some comics for Dr. Tana. So um, we had like a huge stack of um, just different storyboards, but done in more graphic format. Uh, at the time, it was just uh, yeah, that was something cool. Um, they also had art and sculpture. So they tried different things uh, at that time. So it was a little bit a departure from the classic. Um, um, still frame um, storyboards so they use very gra graphic comic and it worked just as well. It just, it just it's kind of interesting you worked on Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> yes. You're responsible. Because we were working on the games as the movie was being made. Yeah, it was really We had to match a lot of the shots. It was crazy. We were, we were working on the movie and um, I was doing television commercials at night for a company called Prime Media, uh, doing interactive uh, educational software and all kinds of stuff. Paying my dues, I was working from 5 p.m. to 3 a.m. trying to get in the industry. And when Jimmy Neutron came around, uh, all these things started happening. People were like, who's Jimmy Neutron? You know? And I remember I was. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, John came up to me and said something like, uh, John Davis, uh, who said, give it six months and every kid in America is going to know who Jimmy Neutron is. And now everybody knows who Jimmy Neutron is. And it's crazy, but there's, uh, there's so many different talents in one room. Uh, working on projects, and John uh, has got a thousand stories. In fact, on uh, Thursday night, I'm sitting there texting him through Gmail, and he's putting out shots 30 minutes before he's got to be at the airport. You know, I mean, he was just turning out shots.